Hey, what's going on? Just wanted to jump in before we start this episode. I recorded this live with Matt Giovannisi for a live stream a few weeks ago. And you'll hear we answer some questions from the chat and we tried to make it flow. We, I mostly ignored the chat for a lot of it and tried to treat this like a pure interview with Matt in the studio. It's always nice to get people live in the studio. So those are where the questions came from. And if you want to participate in said live streams in the future, you can check out the YouTube channel where, you know, you can just go to YouTube search for Doug Cunnington, and then you'll find my channel. I do a live stream every Tuesday, like 90% of the Tuesdays, unless I'm traveling or something like that, at noon mountain time. Usually at noon, sometimes I switch it up, but the best way to stay um, informed is to make sure you're on the email list. So there'll be links in the show notes and description and all that stuff. Of course, from the title of this episode, you know that we talk about shutting down a successful business and Matt tells us all about it. We get into some of the details, some of the struggles, why he's doing it, all the things that you would imagine that we would talk about. So thanks a lot to Matt. He tells you where you can follow him, which is over on Twitter and I'll shut up. We'll get to the show now and thanks a lot for checking it out. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to The Doug Show. This is the live version. So this Mm. is the live stream we do. And I have my good friend, Matt Giovannisi. How's it going today? Good. Today, we're going to talk about why someone would shut down a six-figure business. And it's kind of a new thing. And Matt shut down a six-figure business. So we're going to get into some of the details here and um, just kind of shoot the shit. Yeah. So we have a lot of people on the live stream. We're going to answer some questions Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to actually have a pretty decent conversation and you're not distracted by all the the commenters here, but but I will be. So please ask questions if you're watching later over on the... uh, you know, the recorded version, you could leave comments and all that stuff. So Matt, you've been on several times. Uh, Most recently you were promoting a thing that you shut down. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. For the people that don't know you at all, Uh who are you? What do you do? What do you spend your time doing? Uh, I mean, people would know me from Money Lab here, Um, but my main gig has always been, I run a site called Swim University and I teach people how to take care of their pools and hot tubs on the internet. And I've been doing that since 2006 and that, and then I've, you know, I've done other projects here and there. I've done software companies, you know, WordPress plugins. I got a theme. I've done uh, brewing, home brewing stuff, content. Um, so yeah, kind of all over the place, but yeah, my main gig has always been Swim University. Okay. Renaissance man is what some people call it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You'll take that. You, uh. You like smoking meat too? I was just I like showing so, you. Yes, yeah, so I've been smoking meats this past year, and yeah, yeah. So we beer. we have a lot of overlapping interests. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you've been on a ton of shows. So you've been on like Smart Passive Income, mm-hmm. Niche Pursuits. You've been on my show a handful of times. Yeah, you just had did, your just did Pat Flynn's again. Cool. Recently, awesome. it's not coming out for a while, but yeah. Okay, what'd you talk about if you could share my tweets? Oh, okay. He he handpicked tweets that he liked from me, and we discussed the origin behind them. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But yeah. The the business that I'm shutting down is Money Lab. All right. And has this been announced um, widely? No. Okay. So Money Lab is your, essentially it's like a set of courses and a community mm-hmm. and um, a couple other resources as well. Yeah. It was, oh, I always considered it my personal hub and, and a favorite place to work. I've always liked it. So it's, it's, I'm, I'm shutting down something that I truly love and care about. Um, it's like the idea of killing your darlings very much is what I'm doing. Um, in, in the pursuit of a, a couple of different things that have occurred over the, uh, course of the last couple months, um, of like simplification of my life personally and of, and, and a concentration or a distillation of my um, work energy, my online work energy towards something that actually, you know, makes 
a like significant more amount of money than the business that I'm shutting down. So I am in a, yeah. So, and, and, and we can go into like shiny object syndrome. Cause that's certainly where this came from, you know, like, like money lab and brew cab and all these other ventures that I've started have all been, uh, byproducts of shiny ob- or, or result a result of me having the classic shiny object syndrome where I get very bored at the thing that I'm doing, which people have pointed out to me, even with shutting this down, it's like, you know, you've, you've always refocused on some university to eventually get burned out and then, or burned out or like bored, I should say not burned out. I don't never, I never feel like, Oh, I'm so tired. It's like, yeah. I just I'm bored and I want to go do something else. So like, when are you going to do that other thing? And I'm like, well, I've, I've replaced those other things with more real life things. And I, yeah, we can go into all the reasons that I shut it down, but, um, and the, you know, the fact that I was able to, and, and, and I'm, and when I say shut down, like I'm just, it's not that the content that's on the site is going away or the YouTube channel is going away. It's just like, I'm just kind of not going to post. So it's like a sabbatical. I don't think I'll ever go back, but, um, I just don't want to be in this space anymore. Gotcha. Okay. So a few things. I'll um, explain that too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we, um, we've talked a lot about it, both, you know, recording here Mm -hmm. and, you know, off the record. So those are private conversations. I won't share those exactly, but the, um, I mean, you were very interested in doing more and going all in. Like yes. You, you built out your studio like yes. this year. Mm-hmm. You spent a huge amount of money, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even more time. Mm-hmm. You'll never get it back. Mm-hmm. And you were building out systems, mm-hmm. um, working with your team, which is, you know, family and your lovely uh, fiance. Mm-hmm. And then I saw an email from you. Looked like clickbait, you know. <laughs> yeah. The so, end? Yeah, the yeah. end. And I'm like, oh. He's using he ChatGPT again, yep. again, again. This guy loves AI. Yeah, write me the most clickbaity head, uh, subject line you can and give me 10 results. Yeah. So he, so I, I opened it and I was yeah. like, oh, this looks legit. And then, you know, you recorded a video for the community. Now you're announcing that you're, you're not actively doing anymore and you're kind of shutting down the community and everything. Right? Uh, the, yeah. The community is shutting down because those are paying members and I don't want to, you know, just ghost people. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's yeah, like the the I'm probably gonna take down the courses too. Um, at some point, I have I have until September. So if you if you want them, uh, you can get them, and they'll be available forever if you do get them. But um, yeah, I'm basically I, yeah, I'm I'm getting out of the I guess entrepreneurial teaching space. Okay, one of the comments that I saw was about how people really appreciated you as a teacher. Yeah. I think you like to do it. Yes. So why are you trying to get out of of it? Because it seems like you do like to do it. Yeah. Um, Well, I, yeah, I do. Um, So, so here's, here's where it kind of, here's how it started. I was, the, the plan was to, I was like, all right, swim university is kind of taken care of. Right. I have a small team. It's just me, my brother and my fiance, and they're going to just take care of that. That business more than pays for the bills. Like that is my business. And the entire time I'm like, I'm out, you know, like I want to, and I was like, I want to sell it. I want to, we'll, we'll scale, scale it and sell it. But like, I don't really want to work on it that much. And what I'd rather do. And I think the future is, you know, teaching the like doing online education on teaching people how to build a business because I've seen so many people do that. Um, you know, transition from like, Hey, I have this business. It's not really working. So then I'm going to teach, you know, whatever, but in mine's the reverse where like, no, my thing's really working and I'm choosing to actively teach, teach it to make and making less money at doing that than I am at doing my actual thing. But I was okay with that. Right. And I'm like, Oh, I'm just going to do money lab and brew cab. And those are going to be my two things. And then I like a, 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 a lot of series of events happen. Some that I can't discuss uh, publicly, but I got sort of this like wave and of like something ain't right in this space. 
And obviously I'm on Twitter a lot. And so it, it came from that, but it came from like some private conversation that I have with some people and, uh, which you know about private conversations that I've had with you. And I'm just like, Hmm, this does feel like we're entering. Um, and I, and I kept saying this too, and, and I, I don't want to shit on the industry a hundred percent because it's like, it's not really the reason I'm leaving, but like, it sort of like nudged me a couple of times where I was watching, you know, like these, you know, pieces on John Oliver and the daily show about like scammer culture. And I'm like, dude, I'm one degree away from this. Like I know personally that I'm not these scammers, but Andrew Tate teaches affiliate marketing too. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, Ooh, I don't like being in the same fucking category as him. Um, and so that wasn't the reason for leaving, but I just started to see a lot of like the rise of just money hungry entrepreneurs bragging about money. And then I started doing it because that's how you sell courses, right? It's like, Hey, I'm going to show you how to make money on YouTube because guess what? I make money on YouTube. And they're like, yeah, but how much Matt? I'm like, Oh, now I have to tell you how much. So here's how much. And they're like, oh, now you're just bragging. And I'm like, but you asked, you asked how much, you know. Yeah. So, so I, so one day, so like all of those things were happening, but I was still completely like on board. I'm like, I'm going to be the different person. Like I'm going to be the person who teaches. You're going to save it from within. Yeah. I'm just going to do my, you know, yeah, I'm going to be uh, Ron Swanson. I'm going to just like tear down the system from within. <laughs> um, but like, I just thought I'm going to be one of those people that, you know, again, I'm, I've always been. It's a terrible sales tactic, but I'm the person that's like, oh no, he's l genuine about, you know, and authentic. And it's like, mm -hmm. yes. And, and then, um, I, I watched a lot of, you know, this is a while ago. I watched, um, a lot of entrepreneurs who I liked, who built legit businesses, teaching entrepreneurship, just switch to crypto. Like just and Twitter accounts just went, I'm crypto now. And I'm like, ah, oh, you were never in this to help people. You were only in this to help yourself the whole time. Cause that's all crypto ever was. And then obviously that tanked. And then you just, the, the silence of like, no one talks about crypto anymore and that or NFTs. That was a big thing too. Um, but then chat GPT came out. And again, when that I, we've been using a version of chat GPT for years, right? Like Jasper has been around for a minute. And so like, we all knew the power of AI, but the world got introduced to it with chat GPT and how popular that was and how free it was. Right. But the other one we had to pay for hundred dollars a year or whatever it was at the time. Um, all of a sudden I noticed that every single conversation that I was having in the community and, and not even the community, I won't even, you know, but like every single conversation I was having on Twitter and every question was like chat GPT, how do I use this to grow? How do I use this to like my benefit? And I just went, I don't like this. I don't want to teach this, you know, because it's like, well, then I'm no different. Like mm -hmm. I can't do anything different. I'm like, well, here's a list of prompts, I guess. But like, I can't be authentic about that. I can't be unique about that. I just, I'm just doing what everybody else is doing because that's what everybody wants to learn. So I just went, not the, and again, nothing against chat GPT. Use it every day. And you if know? you want any tips, I have a cheat sheet. Yeah. And um, there's other videos you could watch. I'm probably going to download it. it. Yeah. yeah. Like I use it every day and it's, it has nothing to do. It wasn't about like, I wasn't like eye rolly at using it. I was eye rolly at the people trying to take advantage of it in a, in like, Hey, I'm going to scale very quickly with this. And like, I'm going to change directions and I'm going to do all this stuff. And I just went, I, I don't want to do this, you know, but that wasn't the, the real reason, the real reason of shutting it down was I, you know, obviously this was nudging me that way, but for so long, I just had the thought of, I'm going to let some university coast. Meanwhile, making the most money, like just insane amounts of money. And I'm going to go focus on these other two businesses, which make an insane amount of money. A hundred thousand is not it's nothing, but compared to this, it's nothing. You know, it's a 10th. Um, so like, I look at, I so I'm like, I'm going to go over here and work by myself on these two things and grow them. And like, you know, so that way we have three things. And then one day I was just sitting there and I'm like, I don't even remember nothing prompted it, but I just went, 
wait, what if I flipped that? <laughs> you know, like I'm like, what if I, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm, I'm sitting here like leaving my team out to dry over at some university for, you know, like no pun intended. And then I'm going to go do these other two things and have to scale these businesses, basically starting from scratch all by myself. Or I could take that power that I'm going to, that I would put the, towards these two brands and go, wait a minute, what if these didn't exist? And all, and we all three of us just worked on this one thing and like, how much could I scale it? And then I started, you know, like it, and that, that came from, um, like this, this, I keep hearing this and I, I heard it a lot cause I watched a lot of Alex Hermosi, right? You know who I'm talking about? I've seen a couple of videos. Yeah. So I kept hearing him, you know, say, you know, watching shorts or whatever, just going like, you know, do one thing, like just do one thing and do it, do it well. And I'm like, I am doing one thing. I have Ace Media and we have these three brands and it's like, well, all right, fine. I've been hearing this trope for 15 years. Do do one thing and and you can scale it. All right. I've heard I've heard Miles talk about uh Beckler. I've heard him talk about this like concept of like the rocket ship and how much energy it takes to get it into orbit. But then once it's in orbit, then it's like, holy crap, it takes off. And I'm just like, I love that analogy. And I always thought I was doing it, but I'm not doing it. Right. And so but I think I was fearful of swim university because I'm like, I don't want to be in the pool business. Like I just don't like I've I've been in the pool business my whole life. And mm -hmm. so it's like I don't maybe wanted to be associated with the pool guy. But then I was like, I I, I started thinking about it. Like once I had made that like well, what it was like I made the what if statement to myself, like, well, what if that was flipped? You know, and I did all, you know, what would my life look like after after that decision? And that's when st things started getting really interesting. Um, I started to notice that um, anytime somebody would ask me what I did for a living, I would tell them that. Like I would tell them I, I teach people how to take care of their pools and hot tubs. Because God forbid I told them that I teach people how to make money on the internet. I didn't want to be that. I never, I never brought up Money Lab in public. Um, not that I was ashamed of it, but I just knew it would... It, it could be taken the wrong way, yeah. you know? I think, so I'm going to interrupt you a little bit. So a cu couple things. Mm -hmm. One, I don't think that's true. Like no one would give a fuck. They, they don't even know what you're talking about, man. You're I right. Think, you're, I think you're, you're, right. you're yeah. caught up in the, and I'm I'm coming at you I, hard. I hear you. You're caught up in the Twitter world where you think everyone's talking about this all the time. If yep. you're like, they're like, I don't understand. You're like, I have a couple websites. And they're like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. You're like, I have a podcast. Yeah. They're like, oh, wow, that's amazing. And then you can leave it at that. You're like, right. almost no one knows what the fuck you're talking about. And if they do, they're like, oh, that's really cool. And I was interested. You're right. <laughs> I was always proud to talk about some university because yeah. it's all I've ever known in life. Yeah. Right. I could say, you're right. This is identity issues, but it was like I I just know I just it was something I had, I noticed about myself of like you know I was proud to say that I had some university you yeah. know because some people recognize me from it like it's right. it's big enough to where they're like oh we have a hot tub and we saw your stupid face and I'm like yeah that was my you know it's me yeah, it's me <laughs> um, cool. and it's genuine like I've been yeah. doing it since I was 13 it's the only life I've ever known it's the only career I've ever actually had right so it's like. Yeah, and I'm proud of it. It's not, you know, because it's just not, there's no, there's nothing nefarious about it. There's nothing, there's no, like, I don't puff up my chest about, like, oh, you should be using this type of, like, there's no anger or resentment, or there's just no, there's nothing. I am just providing a service. And it's yeah. just, like, it's clean in that way. It's clean, and, like, you want your pool. You, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's clean like chlorine, baby. So, like, yeah, it's it's just, like, so I went, okay, so this were, these were, like, thoughts that were going through my head as, like, the, it, the what if and I'm like okay and it's like okay well what if all three of us were put on this job like how could we scale it and what would I do differently and I'm like well yeah I would do this and it's like oh that's really clean and that's really easy and no one would is gonna do that and I go that's a pretty good life like that that's a good life mm -hmm. and then I went well, okay, then what would I do with my time 
if I don't have like all these other things to do, right? We're heading into the summer and I'm like, there's times where I'm like, I don't want to be in the basement. Like I want to, I want to see some sunshine. And so I was like, yeah, I would probably like brew more for myself. I would probably barbecue more. I would probably like do lawn work. You know, like I just want to like do, be more active as a human being. And I was like, I think, th and it just like it. And I, I, I stayed on this for, I think two months. Like I had the decision made. But I was like, let me just, let me just play this out like over, because it can't, you know, it's like one of those, like, is this just an impulse pulse thought of like, you know, like I'm just burned out or I'm just tired of this, you know, I'm just mad and I just want to leave. And it's like, it, and every day that went by, I'm like, I feel so relieved. Like I, like so relieved that I don't have to, that all I have to do is pool content sometimes, yeah. you know? And we came up with a system you know, on, we came up with this like thought and system that, and all of this stuff. And I'm like, this feels right. And it feels like a very good long-term position for me. And I went, I think this is going to work. And cool. I can explain the tactical side of mm -hmm. that. Before you do though, mm -hmm. um, couple things we, we got to, we're going to roll a, an ad here in a second, pay the bills from uh, Otis global. So thanks. Thanks to them, but we'll roll that in a minute. Um, the, I totally lost my train of thought. Um, so we'll, you, we'll find the, the, was it a question or did anything come through? It was a, it was a question. A couple of people are just asking what you're shutting down. So maybe you could clarify that, um, okay. exactly in like our website's going to disappear and shit like that. Right. Right. So I have a company privately called Ace Media under that company. I have brewcabin.com, moneylab.co and swimuniversity.com. I am not shutting anything down, meaning I'm not taking anything off of offline. I am just going to not publish consistent content and engage with an audience in, in both brewcabin.com for the most part. I might still do a little bit here and there because that's my passion. Um, and, but mostly moneylab.co and I'm, you know, all of my online business is going to be concentrated over at swim university. Perfect. Okay. And I remembered what I was going yes. to say. And then we'll roll the ad and we're with Matt Javanisi, uh, founder of Swim University, Money Lab, which will still exist, but no new stuff will be published right. in the short term. Yeah. So what I was going to say is, uh, you know, for me, I coach people sometimes and, I, and you do as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. um, or at least you used to. Yeah. Through, through I, 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 look, I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> and if someone came to you and they're like, hey, I got three pieces of the business. This side makes 90% and I'm trying to spend all my time over here. And I've literally had this conversation. Right. You automatically would be like, okay, only focus over here. Yep. And then you would 80, 20 that you're like, Hey, 100%. does, where do you make the money here? And then it's like simplifying a menu, right? You go in, you're like, kill all this stuff, uh -huh. make good chicken sandwiches and fucking waffle fries. Yes. And then, yes. um, be you know, yeah, yeah. I, you know what? I am that's I'm, automatically what you would say. I am taking my own advice is what I'm doing. <laughs> like and that's what I'm saying. I've heard this advice from Alex and I'm just like I hear you. I I agree with you and yet I'm not doing it. So who so who am I to go ahead and teach entrepreneurship online when I'm not even doing it the way that I would do it if I were somebody else t t teaching me or somebody else mentoring me like, you know, I had a, I had I had somebody say to me um I was doing, I was running Facebook ads and she was like, well, before you start running Facebook ads, you know, you really need to work on your SEO. And I'm like, well, that's where all my traffic comes from. It's like, that's, she's like, oh, like, why are you running Facebook ads? I'm like, uh, cause I don't know what I'm doing. Cause you know, so it's like, how am I, you know, and then I go on my community. I'm like, I'm running Facebook ads. And they're like, teach us about Facebook ads. And I'm like, I am not qualified to do that. Cause I haven't figured it out yet. You know, like I'm still, yeah. I'm still learning. And so, yeah, I just want to go back to doing the the entrepreneurial work instead of doing it and then ha having to immediately turn around and go like, here's what I did, you know, and like shrug my shoulders like it, you know. Yeah. yeah. So when we get back from the break here, we're going to ask about what you're going to miss from Money Lab and how are you going to keep from burning out like oh, you yeah. have in the past? Because that is... Uh, potentially a real threat. And this is from uh, Otis Global, the source for premium age domains. And we'll roll this and we'll be right back. So we're talking with Matt about shutting down a successful six figure <laughs> business for um, what, I mean, he has reasons, but a lot of people would be like, Hey, couldn't you just uh, sell it or yeah, yeah sell it. Yeah. Someone something. asked why, why wouldn't you sell it? 
it's, it's way too tied to my personal name yeah. to, yeah, would not okay. feel comfortable with that. And if someone offered you enough, would you be like, hey, I would sell it? Because some people don't actually care. And they're like, hey, this is good content on here. There's some assets. And no. I, I would take it. So you would keep it. Yeah. Is it because one, I don't, I know you never know. Right. And two, um, I just don't, I, that's a little bit too, you know, I'm all, I already don't feel good about the being associated with the industry right this moment. And I would feel really bad if I sold it. And then it looked like whoever bought it did something shitty with it. And now my name's permanently attached to it. Like people still email me about Roasty and I've sold that like five years ago, you know? And it's like, my name's still on it. My face is still on the YouTube videos. Yeah. You know? So it's like, but he didn't, he just didn't screw it up. So it's like, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't care. But if, you know, right. if, if he switched it to like, I don't know, all crypt, like coffee crypto, then I'd be like, dude, please take my stuff off, like take my name and stuff mm-hmm. off this. I don't want to be associated with it, but yeah. Yeah. Is there coffee crypto now? Is that a thing? Oh yeah. Don't, <laughs> I don't Everything. know if that's true, but so, same coin. So you're, you're, um, you're going to leave the content up. So videos yeah. will stay up. Yeah. The blog posts will stay up. Yeah. And what, what are you going to miss though? What are you going to miss about this part of the business? The, I'm going to miss the community part of it. That's which is like the back end of it. Um, some of the, like, it's mostly about the other people. Like it's the camaraderie that I, you know, had with like friends who, you know, like you teach this stuff, you know, miles teaches this stuff. It's not that we can't, you know, I'm still around and I'm still going to talk about business like in a public way. Cause I still run one, but I'm just not going to profit off of that. So, um, I I guess that's I'm not really going to miss all that much cuz I don't feel like I'm actually 100% pulling out of like I'm done I'm out of here like don't you know like mm-hmm. uh, you know you'll never see me online again it's like no I'm here I'm just like I'm just taking again like my own advice of being like wow you have too many things focus on this dude like this is clearly making 10 times more than your other businesses. Like, why are you wasting your time over here when you could scale this like a, a beast, you know, not even scale it, just like continue to capitalize on off of it for like your entire life and be completely fine. You know? So like, yeah, it just, it, it, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to miss much. Cause I don't think I'm a hundred percent leaving. If anything, I'm going to, I'm, if anything, I'm happy that I, don't have as much work to do and I don't have to switch gears all the time, you know, or like I get very like I'm what I'm not going to miss is the anxiety of, of not publishing something for a while. Like I feel that all the time where I'm like, you know, I haven't sent an email out in a while or like I haven't posted a tweet in a minute or like I haven't, you know, did a challenge on my blog in a long time. So like I, I get anxiety about that and then it's like, Oh, okay, well I have to carve out space for that. And the other thing too, is I used to feel like I couldn't. So I have a brewery in my home and it's my personal, like it's the thing I love to do the most. And I always told myself and I, and it was like, you don't get to brew because that's fun. You have to work first and then brew, you know? And so I would always relegate brewing to the weekends, but then that's when everyone's off and they're like, you want to hang out? I'm like, yeah, I was going to brew today, but I guess I'd rather hang out. And so like, yeah. So because I had so many things to do and so many like irons in the fire that I was like, oh, I, I, I have to work. I have to work. Mm -hmm. You know, I have three things going on, but now I'm like, oh, I have a job. It's clearly defined. When I finish that, it could I could finish it all on a Monday, and I'm like, I did what I was supposed to do, and so like, I could take off a week and not feel that anxiety because I did my work. How long have you been working for yourself? Uh, Full time. Yeah. 2011. Okay. Why do you still feel that pressure? You made your own job. Yeah. So why why do you feel the pressure to work? Did you do uh, grow up Catholic or something? Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh. Why do I feel the pressure to, well, well, okay. Two things. One, I like it. So it's not, it's not work to me. It's like, it didn't feel like, it doesn't feel like a slog. 
It feels fun. Hold on, I'll interrupt. You said you get anxiety. So uh, yeah, very, this very is, super mild. But it's fun. But but you but you like you feel the pressure though. So like I'm like you feel you you wouldn't yeah. let yourself do fun yeah. stuff. But yeah. then you just said the the work uh-huh. the work that you have is fun. So w- this doesn't make sense. Yes, you're right. Um, brewing is work too, right? Uh, it's an all day event, and it doesn't even end there. It's like you're taking care of this fermenter, and it's like, but at the end of it. You, it's really only for you, right? So it's, I was, I like the physicality of working, but I, I felt like in order to keep things afloat, especially Money Lab, Money Lab is not an evergreen type of business. Like there's always things changing. And so I constantly felt like I had to schedule more tweets or, just to keep the money rolling in. Like it, it, it just felt like a hamster wheel. And then obviously you start a community and it's like, well, the community is not going to thrive without you posting multiple things a week. So I started to build the engine of like, oh, we're going to be consistent content forever, you know, by doing the video podcast in the studio in the basement, by doing like by scheduling, you know, 50 tweets a week by, you know, and and but then like constantly updating, you know, course material because shit's always changing and like. You know, um, so yeah, there was a, there was a, there was like this, this, I had to work or else the money stopped. Mm-hmm. Whereas that is not the case at Swim University. So I don't feel the pressure there as much because it's seasonal and, and the content's there and it, and it's evergreen. Whereas Bunny Lab wasn't that. Got it. Okay. So you alluded earlier to like getting burned out or bored when you have yeah. focused, um, it's too much on one thing for too long. So what's in place now uh-huh. to keep you and prevent that boredom so that you'll stay focused. And then, you know, the thing is, like I said, a few months ago, you were like, I'm going all in, I'm building a studio, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you like turned on a dime, which is another question coming up. Yeah. But like, yeah, what are you, what are you doing to prevent this issue? Um, it was a, a shift in, all right, there was a couple of things that like I noticed. Um, I again, this goes back to Alex Hermosi. Kind of like Alex Hermosi messed me up. Um, Kevin from Epic Garden messed me up a little bit, all in good ways. Um, but co- sort of like just kept honing in on like this idea of like doing one thing. Um, doing boring work for a long period of time is how you grow a business, and it's not fun. Like it's, it's not, it's like, it's just, it just isn't. And I hated that anytime it got boring and I had to do boring work, I would switch. I would switch to something and get that new excitement, starting money lab, starting brew cabin, doing a a ridiculous video or doing like these individual projects, you know, over three different brands, because I felt, and money lab was built on this premise that like, Everything is a project. Nothing is like a consistent, like, oh, let's just put out a YouTube video every single week. Cause guess what, Matt, you're going to get bored of that and you're going to want to do something else. And so we, I baked it into the structure of Money Lab to allow me to have those like constantly new things to work on. Um, so I, I, so, and I'm still not, I'm not burned out on it and I'm not bored by that work. So I went, okay, hold on a second. If, if it's true, that business is just a series of boring events, you know, that lead up to, you know, that, that just create this like growth curve. I'm like, well, then I need something else. It can't be business, right? It can't be like, it can't be the thing that like excites me as a human being. So I started to like, I, so I have this book, uh, um, that I, it was about brewing. It was about sour beers. And, um, what's the book? American sour beers by okay. Michael Tonsmeyer. And I put it on my nightstand and I'm like, I- I've never read, I bought the book, you know, probably a couple of years ago, but planning on reading it, never did, picked it up. And I, every night I would read until I felt bored, right? I would just like read enough. And then like, I woke up or I went to bed one day to, and I picked up the book and I'm like, oh, oh, that's it. I'm done. 
I read the book and I was like, that felt like easy because I didn't push myself. And then I'm, I've been losing weight because we're like, we're having a wedding and I'm like, well, I always used to like tackle weight loss and like health, like physical health stuff in like 30 day you projects, know, like, which yeah. is the wrong way to do it. Right. Challenges to myself. Like, oh, I'm going to work out every single day and I'm going to push myself. And I'm going to sweat bullets. And I'm like, you know, and then of course you, you know, it's exciting then to be start. And then you are like, okay, I can't sustain that. Like that's too much. And so that's the same advice I was getting with weight loss, which is like, this is not, and I've, you've heard this. It's not new. It's a lifestyle change, you know? And I'm like, not that. I don't like, I don't know. I need to lose weight like tomorrow. And it's like, no, that's not how it's going to happen. Like, it's going to be like, it takes you a long time to gain weight. And so it takes you a long time to lose weight. And I'm like, well, okay. If I approach this the same way I approach business, which is like, just do a little bit every day, but, but like pretend like it never ends. There's no goals. There's no finish line. I'm like, that's kind of relieving because then there's nothing to work towards. It's just work for the sake of it. And like, and I'm like, oh, okay. So, wow. Then what else can I do with my time? All right, let's uh, work on the backyard. You know, we got a huge backyard and we want, I want to start, you know, gardening. I want to start a sour beer project. I want to start gardening specifically to make beer with that stuff, you know? And it's like, Okay, I have other things to do. Again, something that is like long term caretaking. There's no goal, you know, right. like we're not going to like have all the hops for my, my whole life in one season. It's like, no, I got to keep doing this forever. And I kind of feel like burnout is the is that. It's it's when you run really fast, really hard because you're trying to just get to this place where you think you'll be happy. And then you get there, you're not happy, and you're tired as all hell. Yeah. And so like that was constantly what I was doing, whether it was starting new businesses or working on projects within those businesses to like push myself to be in like, oh, I'm gonna make we're gonna make a shitload of money if we get to this, or we're gonna do, you know, like, oh, we're gonna launch this thing, or like, oh, I'm gonna start this like, I don't know, new project within the business. And it was just like, this is tiring because it's the constant starting and stopping. And um, so I have found the long answer to this, you know, to your question is like, I have found other areas of my life that are fulfilling that, but I'm also completely changing as I approach 40, how the rest of my life is going to be, which is live at, you know, don't live hard, just live easy, which is like, just do little things, just do things like for weight loss and stuff, I'm like, some days I don't feel like lifting weights and some days I don't feel like running. Other days, kind of have the energy to do it and I kind of want to do it. And so letting myself ebb and flow with those feelings instead of going like, don't, you know, it's like the the Goggins, you know, mentality of like, just get do it. Just put, put your shoes on and like, <laughs> yeah. just do it. Stop being a puss. You know, it's like, yeah. well, don't, don't sleep. It's like, dude, yeah, you'll sleep, sleep when you're so dead. Funny. I'm like, I, I like sleeping, you know, like, all right. Like, you know, it's, and it's not like I'm, uh, it's like I'm having an easier life. It's just that there's this idea that like, I'm going to have a massive business. I have one now and I'm going to have one later because I'm going to continue to do the little things over the course of the boring, slow, you know, work. Cause like, you know, like some university, it's I'm never going to have a viral moment. You know, it's like, it's just pool care, you know? Right. So I'm never, you know, I, I can't chase vanity metrics. There's nothing to chase. I can't chase like huge sales days besides in the summer. And it's like, okay, but then it resets every year. It's like, okay, 2024 might be not as good because the weather is terrible or like whatever. But it's like, okay, as long as we do this thing over and over and over again forever without burning out, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's going to work. So, and I'll try to summarize a little bit there. So it was around like how to not burn out. So you just made it sustainable. So your, yeah. your analogy was what a long fucking answer. I know. Sorry. <laughs> you spun a tail for us. And then I was like, what was the question? Even? So, so basically <laughs> what you you did, your perfect analogy uh, was like dieting and it's like, yeah, crash diets could work on the short term, but you really need a sustainable. You can't roll back. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or or working out. And I'm like a really good example because I usually don't work out that hard. Yeah. 
but I'm extremely consistent and I have been right. for a really long time. Right. And I'm in pretty good shape. Not the greatest shape. People get out. I can't even fucking run because I hurt my ankle, yeah. you know, or yeah, like yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Achilles. We both mm-hmm. have the same issue. Mm-hmm. Um, but cardio wise, I'm in good shape. My weight's in the right spot. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm consistent. And I probably only work out hard like one day per week max yeah that's it yeah. and i eat shitty sometimes sometimes like right. we were at a brewery you, you, were... you come but like that's the thing about even weight loss too it's like and it's such a good uh like analogy for this which is like yeah like i used to get really bummed out if i would like be really good all week and then i'm like i want a beer tonight and then i would just over drink and then i would eat like shit and i'd wake up the next day and i'm like i hate myself i fucked it all up and instead, now I go get back on it. Yeah, just get back to it. Like it's you, you, yeah, you, you fucked it up a little bit. Like, but yeah. like it's not a again. There's no goal, right? Even though I'm getting married, and it's like, oh, it'd be great to be a specific weight when I'm when I'm on that day. But I'm not going to beat myself up for not being on. You know, as long as I'm consistently working towards, I want this. I want my life to look and feel like this, and I'm going to work to get there. And it may take me for another 40 years, but by the time I'm 80, I'm going to fit. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, but it's like, okay, cool. But like, maybe not, maybe it'll be earlier than that. And then maybe again, once you get there, you have to sustain that. Like, it's not like you get there and you're like, cool, I can eat whatever I want now. I can go back to like, you know, cake every day. It's like, no, that's not how it works. And so same thing with business. It's like, once you get like, you have the, I, I, everyone talks about those big sales days and it's like, okay, now it gets hard. You know, it's like, oh, I had a $10,000 launch. Okay, try to do that again. Like, try to do that next month. It's it, it, People don't. Mm-hmm. And then they burn out and they stop because they we worked so hard for this product launch. And then it's like, oh, no, no, now the real work begins, mm-hmm. you know, which is long, slow, boring, consistent output. It is, yeah. And I, I think about some of my launches and, you know, you, you sold... Well, you have a lot of stuff that you sold. Yeah. But I, I do launches. Yeah. So it's like- You do sli- focus. launch cycle, cycles. Yeah. And um, the feedback loop is extremely long. So it took me like, mm. whatever, two years to optimize that. Right. So like when you tell someone that, they're like, oh, fuck, I can't. Like they, you have some friends, they like launched a course and they were like, yeah, when a, I'm just going to throw in the autoresponder and then go from there. I'm like, you didn't even test anything. No. You tested right. nothing. You didn't optimize anything. And now you're automating um, like a, inefficiency. A bad, yeah. And then it, it uh, multiplies the And then it gets mistake. worse. Yeah. yeah. So we're like, ah, it's not selling that well. I'm like, no shit. You did zero work on it. It takes a really long time. Boring work. Changing one thing. Mm-hmm. Sending out an email like 30,000 times. And then you're like, okay, that didn't work. But, uh, but also Forget. too, like- if you I, like, I'm not a real big metrics person, you know, like I'm not a good CRO, but I would say that like, I always just lean back on, am I being ri- ridiculously helpful? Like, if, like if I'm not, if I'm just feeling like salesy, I go, eh, all right, let me try Let me try another email where I'm like, I'm going to help. I'm going to help like, a, I'm going to help like so hard on this. Yeah. And then I do. And I'm like, wow, oh, that really worked. Okay. Like I, I know what works being ridiculously helpful. And like generous with your information and knowledge and time. Yeah. And and then like those usually work out. And if they don't, like over time, you'll just keep, tr- you know, like you don't have to create the best autoresponder in like a week. Like you can set it up and then remember that that autoresponder is, at, will evolve forever. You're, it, and this is where I think, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to generalize. But what I've learned is like, this is a forever game. It's not a sprint to a million subscribers on YouTube, right? It's like, okay, you're at a million. I don't know. You have like 40, 50 more years left in your life. Like, can you do that again for the rest of your life? And it's like, oh, no, I was I just trying to get to a million. And it's like, well, you know, now, now the real work begins, which is like, okay, cool. I'm all about the sprint in the early days, you know? it's really tough to like downshift and go, it's like, you know, it's like the, the, all that energy of getting the rocket into orbit. It's like, no, okay. Now you can, you can choose, like you can keep going and put pressing the, like, I don't know, they have throttles or whatever they have in the spaceships that like, keep really going. But like, even if you just go a little bit and you just like, 
little spurts, you go and you just mm-hmm. keep gaining more and more momentum as you go and you'll you'll get to where you want to get someday. And as you know, it's it's like I it's really hard to like chase um virality, you know, on the internet and like all of these other things when it's just like if you I just want to, you know, it's like I can get excited now about building uh what I and this is <sighs> I'll say this because I, this is kind of also, it, it, it fed into my decision. Two years ago at Swim University, I decided, you know, privately within the community to try to sell my own physical products. And I was totally against this idea. I was like, I'm never going to be a physical product business. But I had somebody in the community who, basically said, yeah, but if you did, like it would be huge because you've done the hardest part, which is build an audience. And I was like, yeah, but I don't know how to do it and I don't want to learn. And he walked me through it, didn't take long, put me in touch with the right people. And I launched a product within two to three months of that initial conversation. Everybody wanted to learn from me. And I'm like, I can't teach you because I fell, I got lucky. Someone told me I would be good at this, wanted to help me against my will, and then put me in touch with a person who could source products for me. And I'm like, oh, this was really easy. And I put $5,000 of capital out of pocket, which was incredibly affordable. Mm -hmm. And the first, I sent it out an email and I sold out all my stuff. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute, hold on a second. And like, I was like, though, this is a real, this felt like a real business. Like I have, I have, I'm holding the things in my hands and money lab would have never been that, Yeah, you know, eat brew cabin maybe, but like, I'm like, oh, I really like this physical. I, I, I keep, I'm refraining from calling it a real business, but privately I call it a real business yeah. because it's like, I have things to sell to people, not just digital assets. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah. I was going to say a couple things. One, th- we got some stuff from the, uh, the, the chat, chat here. Cool. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm yeah. going to read those out. Please. Um, but also, and I won't let, I'm not even going to let you respond to my uh, quip back at you, but like, that's your own mental mm-hmm. like cage that totally. you've trapped yourself in mm-hmm. because there are some like online businesses that pop up and disappear. It's like lack of consistency yeah. and maybe um, people just get excited, whatever. But we've been running our businesses for like, you know, over a decade, right? Yeah. Each of oh, us yeah. have making like really good money. Yeah. And you know, those are real businesses, even if we like strip away and people are like, Oh, this kind of bullshit. It's like, we consist like we have assets. Totally. Um, so yeah, it's your own mental cage. A hundred percent. Okay. So Waylon asks about um, Carbonate, mm-hmm. your WordPress theme, will that stay active and available? No. Okay. So no. So people, get if it, you get want it, 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 get it while yeah, you yeah. Use my affiliate link, folks. I think yeah. it's uh, nichesiteproject.com yeah. slash Carbonate. Get it, get it while it's hot. All right. And a lot of people are leaving great comments here. And I, I encourage you if you... Uh, hmm. Here's something that you have resonated with. Let us know. Uh, John says, you got it with the little things. The best investment I made was walk a walking pad and a standing desk. I walked 10,000 steps while working Monday through Friday and have lost 25 pounds. Yeah. Paula from uh, Paula's Picks. Do you know Paula? Yeah. Okay. Paula says, yeah, she's been in here a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I won't be able to hit everything, but so much of success is due to mindset and the little wins are sometimes overshadowed uh benno says i want to see matt jacked so (laughs) no no it's not working out yeah (laughs) you you look like you i think you could put on a ton of muscle oh i could oh yeah yeah like i'm i i don't eat enough like i i love to eat but i don't work out hard enough that's i don't like working out hard i i I thought you know i was like oh wouldn't it be like because i you know i think about the jack thing and i'm like one it's i could walk into a room no one could ask me anything i just look like a regular white guy yeah right and so they're like but but if they if you ask me a question it's like oh wow he runs a business like he's an interesting person but if i walked in jacked i am visibly an interesting maybe maybe interesting like you'd be like dude like you know you i just i don't know it's like a it's like you're wearing your like accomplishment on your body 
And I can't think of any other like way of like wearing your like it's like it's like if you walked if you were like an Olympic medalist yeah. and like everywhere you went you just wore your medals you're like oh that guy's a douche yeah. you know like but <laughs> if you just were jacked you're like wow you you're a committed like you're a guy that or you're a person that does like that's good at something you know yeah. what I mean yeah 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 and there's something something to think about but no I'll never do that <laughs> I don't like it <laughs> it's, enough it's too much work. I also think like I don't want to lift weights I I, I I've gone back and forth on a like gym thing like I don't want to be a gym person. Yeah. I want to gain muscle and lose weight by doing productive activities that benefit not just my body but others. So like okay, building something or digging or like I don't know, like productive work. So I I feel way better than like if I just went downstairs in silence and went Ew. and then yeah, but, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I feel I don't know. Well, and I, I grew up going to like uh, the YMCA. Yeah. Um, and really, I, w- I played basketball, like just pick that, up that, games when that, I was So a that's kid. fun though. Yeah. That so, feels good. That feels like a good thing. So it was like community and integrated. And um, I like started lifting weights some, and I'm not like huge into lifting weights, but I actually enjoy like getting out of the office, yeah. walking to the gym. I may see a couple people, whatever. Um but I mean, I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just like, oh, no, somehow I, I found like a system yeah, that works. I, what I found is like, if I do housework and it's like I lift things or even brewing sometimes, as long as, if I don't drink during it, which I try yeah. not to, yeah. but like, yeah, you're lifting buckets. Like it's, again, slow over time. But like right yeah. now I'm like rebuilding my entire pond by myself and it's like lifting heavy rocks and digging holes. And I'm like- yeah. All right, this is going to take me a month. That's like a good month of like a workout. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean, dude, I did uh, 15 tons in my front yard. I did all that myself. You did, see? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, and it was a great workout. I did right. it like in the dead of summer. It was so hot. But <laughs> yeah. It was cool. My ri- neighbors thought it was nuts, but it was, um, it's rewarding. It was worth it. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, okay. So, couple couple other things yeah. here. In our conversation, and I kind of alluded to it, um, you know, you're on Twitter a lot. Uh-huh. You mentioned you didn't want to be associated with um, the industry because it's kind of sleazy. And when I talk about it, I'm like, hey, you know what? I, I'm in the make money online area, which can be, you know, scammy and sleazy, but I'm like, I'm doing it in a professional doing? way. Sure. That's my background. Yep. It seems to work. Um, and I don't take any offense to any, if anyone is wondering, like, your, uh, you know, you're degrading. My no, and I'm, I don't, I don't want to do that. And I'm yeah. not talking about our crew. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's yeah. like I'm talking about like, Ernst Skimmer, Skimmer. Yeah. like you know, I'm talking about like, cause it's like, ugh. okay. So the anyway. re- the real question is why do you care what the other people thought? <laughs> because I'm just like, yeah, I, I largely, um, this is to a detriment to my YouTube channel, but I don't, I mean, I kind of peruse the comments, but I don't reply back and there's some good stuff in there and I will do research, but I, I'm not active on Twitter or other social media. I'm in a little bit of a vacuum and I think yeah. it helps me create oh, and sure. stay sane. So uh-huh. why the, why do you give a fuck? Uh, it's unfortunately how I am. Not, not that, I, not that that can't be changed. It can be. And I've, and I've <laughs> been, tr- would love to change, which is like, Getting off of Twitter is helpful, you know. Like I've I've kind of like isolated myself in this pursuit. Like I I do care what people think, even anonymous people. Those are the uh, worst people. I know. Care about. I I I <laughs> I've tried so hard to not take things personally. Like even when I worked at a job, and like my boss would just be a little angry at me, I, I would just dwell on it forever. And I'm like, I never want to disappoint anybody. You know, it's just like, it's just, I think I'm just like a, I feel like a servant to others and I, and I always want to do a great job. And so whenever I feel like I'm not, it's, it, it, it's like a personal affront and I never blame the other person. I always blame myself. Like I am always to blame first before others. And it's helped me in relationship building. Cause like, I never assume anyone's out to get me or anyone's out to harm me. I always go, what did I do? to make them have that reaction or whatever, which is, which has forced me as a person to grow. Right. It's like, I, I've some comments I go, maybe they're right. And maybe I need to look at myself and, and, and think about it a little harder, which has happened a few times. And I'm like, I it's, and it's been a good thing, Mm -hmm. but yeah, it's, it's also like, it, it hurts, but it's, if it's done anything, it's put me back into the place where I, 
like it, no one's pushed me out. It's, it's just like, I kind of like sat there and like thought about it. And I'm like, yeah, I kind of feel better over here as a person, mm -hmm. you know? And, and it's so relaxing. And over here, I kind of feel like there's this weird tension and I can't let go of it because my face is on it. And I'm like, it's me. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, so I wish I could, I wish I had a better answer, but the truth is, is that it affects me and I can't help it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right yeah. now. It's really hard. I would love to, you know, and I don't, and I don't want to go to therapy for it, although I'd be happy to. Um, but I actually think it's, it's, it has served me well in a lot of areas and has not served me well, like on Twitter, you know, oh, like it's, sure. it's terrible there, but like in personal, you know, aspects i'm like oh that's, I'm, I'm glad i'm like that a little bit mm -hmm. you know because it's like i never want to make someone angry or i never want right. to like say something to say the wrong thing or yeah. you know um i always want to constantly better myself and as a uh yeah as, as a personal growth tactic it's helpful as long as it can be managed and i think um so a couple things one, as you were talking, I realized hey i do i look at comments occasionally and if there's something in there um, that's critical. That's great. Yes. If I could do something with it yes. and I'm like, I will take action and I'm like, Hey, thanks for letting me know. Like, no, like I'm admitting like, Hey, I can improve. Right. Which I, everyone can improve. Sure. So, so I, I don't like completely ignore it, but if it's just like a lot of noise and I think what you're describing, you were like in personal relationships, it can be good because you're conscientious of other people. You're self-aware. Yeah. However, would you scale it to oh, social yeah. media? Yeah, you bad. cannot. It's hard to control. You can't filter it the same. No, way. and I can't choose. Like I can't choose to like. I could block people, which I've done, but it's like, you know, maybe they have a point. You know, it's yeah. like I always got to look at it. Like maybe they're right, and so yeah. think about it. Are they right? No, I think I think I still think they're an asshole. So like block, but yeah. if you know, and I d very rarely did that, but um, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's yeah, I and it, and it's the same. I have the same issue with like um selling out as someone who tried to be a musician for a long time, that word has always kind of haunted me, you know, as a, as a, somebody who considers themselves a creative first and a business person last, you know, like I've, I've always wanted to make a, be a, I will just say the word creator. Cause I don't want to say artist or whatever, but I always felt like that, like a creative type. Mm hmm and so like business is scary, like, like selling out and like making money from your craft is like not cool. Right. right. And I was going to ask you about that because yeah. I know, you know, some of our pre-interview chat was around that. And I, I think, I guess I'm probably an engineer first uh -huh. and then business, but now I'm like less engineering. I do approach things with like a problem solving um, idea. Yeah. But like, as far as the art and selling out, uh -huh. I was like, I know that's something deep in you and it probably helps you create and do a really good job. Um, yeah. and you want to do the best that you can do. And I've like, you know, had a perfectionist, um, mm -hmm. you know, engineering detail oriented, all that. And then I've gotten away from it and uh, I'm just like, you know what? I'm coasting. And I think you've, you and I have had enough conversations. Like I'm phoning in a lot of shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, the, 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 f man, there's like, there's so many phrases, um, that I'm like trying to live by now. I, 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 I realize like I am not a famous artist and I am not going to be right. And I learned that a long time ago, right. Where I was like, I'm kind of okay being the pool guy. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, you know, and I can be the top fish in the smallest pond, you know, and I'm totally happy doing that. And it's very easy for me to ascend there because again, small pond. So like when I, when I do homebrewing videos, like they are very good compared to the rest and same with uh, pool videos. Like I did a pool rap video, like no one's ever done that before. And it's like, oh, this is actually good comparatively you know what i mean like am i a rapper no am i a you know movie maker no but compared to the small pond i'm in yeah and so i've always been able to and i'm i'm comfortable being there the business side of it though um my dad used to say musicians make terrible business people and i hated that 
Because I was like, I want to be a musician, but I can't be a musician if I'm not getting paid. Like, I'm, I don't want to be a starving artist. Um, Because I like money and I like living the like with money. And I like not having that stress more than I like being an artist. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to figure out money. At the same time, I'm going to continue being an artsy person, you know, or a creative person. Um, so I've always been like, I, I care more about the creativity. I care more about, like, I'm so like, I'm a, such a vivacious learner in like the creative arts and then business I am, but to a lesser extent, you know what I mean? And, and, I, and I'm willing to like, not make smart business moves because of like certain things, you know, like I like for the longest time and we're still doing it. Like I don't put ads on my site. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why? And I'm like, I, is it stupid? Yes. But I can't not do it. Like I can't do it. It's right. just like not going to happen. So like, you know, I have to be good at other parts. Like it's like, okay, you're not going to do that. Fine. Then you better get good at these other things and, and to replace that. And so that's like, you know, physical products and creating courses and being really good at those things and not even like CRO good. Just like I did it. And I put it out there and I will slowly get better over time and I will slowly get pieces of information and I will slowly put those things into action. But, um, got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I think we're going to, we're going to wrap up here and I think that's a pretty good spot to end. I'll kick it back to you in a second mm. to let people know where you could find him <laughs> or find you. And, um, the thing I was going to say is like, I'm, I'm similar. Like we have a lot of parallels, but yeah. it's like a different priority. So you mentioned, you know, you're willing to sacrifice the bottom line for the creativity. And what yeah. I'm doing, I'm sacrificing lifestyle or I'm getting lifestyle back in extra time. So I'm doing other things yeah. and having a lot more free time instead right. of like scaling and growing bus the business and doing more and more and more. I was like, I don't want to do more and more and more. No, That's uh, no. like, there's, there's always someone ahead of you. So it's like the same the same sacrifice, but like different priority. I will say this because I, I wanted to talk about the tactical side of what I'm currently doing at Swim University. I am in a position and I, to, to quit these other things because that thing is doing so well. And we are the, you know, in, in the world of pool and hot tub content, we are one of the top fish in the big, in the small pond, mm -hmm. right? All I have to do is maintain my position there. And that job is really easy, which is just create content every week. Mm -hmm. It's not that difficult to do. And the, what we're doing currently is like, there's we have a team member doing customer service. We have a team member doing uh, three reels a week. We have a team member doing videos. We have a team member doing uh, a blog post once a week. We have a team member doing, you know, scheduling emails. Now I said all these team members, they're some of them are the same job. <laughs> yeah. It's three people. Um, so like, yeah, but that's it. If we do that, that's a lot of content. Like that's an insane amount of content, right? But three people doing one thing. And and to me, I think like if you just keep making content like that, you just keep growing. And you just you just, just and it's and then little. yeah, little by little. But then like the the company that has like a real product and they're trying to grow how it's going to take them like 10 to 15 years to get where I am already. And so what are they probably going to do? You know what I mean? So I'm like look, waiting for that day where they're like, uh, we could start now and try to beat these guys or absorb, Yep. you know, which I'm not against, but also like if we just keep going, it's like the, it's the thing no one's going to do, right. They're going to keep spending their money on ads and they're going to keep doing this stuff. And we're going to keep organically growing on all these platforms and collecting the emails and one day yeah. it'll be like, well, holy shit. You know, it's like Mr. Beast, like spent, you know, however many years, like building a massive audience only to be like, Oh, we have chocolate now. And it's like, <laughs> if we have what? Chocolate. Like, okay. And it's like, it's just ridiculously like profitable. So there, so that's the, that's the, that's the like tactic essentially that I'm leaning in towards for the rest of my life. <laughs> the rest of your life. It's a really yeah. long time. Okay. Really long time. If people want to hear more from Matt, uh, let us know in the comments, let us know in the chat, like the video, all that stuff. Shoot me an email. I sent this out before. Mm -hmm. And Matt, where can people find you? Uh, you can, I'm still on Twitter. Um, on at, Twitter. Okay. Perfect. I'm on Twitter. 
Cool. We'll link it up. But what is it you're about to say? Oh, at Matt Givenisi. Perfect. Name. Easy to spell. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll link it up yeah. and uh, people can check it out. Thanks, Matt. It's always yeah. fun to catch up. Appreciate it.